Uh, uh, yeah. Rick Santorum says the Pope should leave science to the scientists. Now, oh, before he became a man of the cloth, before he became Pope, what was it? What was it that? Uh, what was it that the Pope did? Oh, yeah. He has a master's degree in chemistry. He's actually a scientist. <laughs> I can't even say the word. He's a scientist. But when you're saying leave the science to the scientists, when you allow the Pope to talk about climate change, that's exactly what you're doing. He's a chemist. He has a deeper understanding of science than Santorum ever could have hoped to have in his tiny little pea brain. But yeah, Pope has been, well, Pope, who has a master's degree in chemistry, was a chemist before turning to the priesthood, has gotten pretty vocal about climate change. And apparently he's preparing for a, a groundbreaking speech and a groundbreaking set of, I guess, rules, guidances in the coming weeks that are going to make the case that taking action to fight climate change is a moral and religious imperative. <laughs> Santorum has gone on the record saying the church has gotten it wrong a few times on science. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you're going after the religious vote. Don't you think you should shut the hell up about this? Don't you think you should? Well, I guess maybe it's because he's Catholic. I don't know. I think maybe he has to do a little papal bashing so that the uh, largely Protestant religious right over here gets behind him. And like, oh, he's still a man of the cloth, but he's a Catholic. Oh, well, he did, you know, tell the Pope to shut the hell up about climate change. Oh, maybe he's not so bad. Hmm. <laughs> we should leave it to the scientist. Oh. He's actually a scientist. And he's the guy that you're supposed to absolutely kiss the ring of if you're in the world of Catholicism, which Santorum is. Rick Santorum, in case you're not remembering. Rick Santorum is the guy who took a stab at the Republican presidential nomination last time around. Extremely holy roller. Uh, Anti-gay marriage, anti-birth control. He looked like he almost had a shot, too, until he opened his big bazoo and said that he planned to. Do you remember this? What did he plan to do? If I become president, I'm going to ban pornography. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Candidacy down in a fiery ball of failure to recognize that people like to fap it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, I mean, this time out, he's uh, wisely avoiding <laughs> the rhetoric that he's going to ban pornography if he's elected. That guy. You remember Obama and Romney? And it looked like he might actually be a contender for a second when he was like, I'm going to ban pornography. Obama and Romney were laughing their asses off at that one. Millions of dollars in campaign money flushed directly down the toilet. You can hate on gays if you're on the right. You can hate on equality. You can hate on contraception. You can hate on abortion. All the above. And you can still get the support of the cross-burning, non-opposable thumb-having AR-15 hoarders in this country. But, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, take away a man's God-given fat material to use in the privacy of his own home? Yeah. That's it for you. You're a wash. I bring this guy up not because he's in any way, shape, or form relevant with a real shot at it. Look, I'll be proven wrong. Day will be night. Night will be day. Satan will be ice skating to work and Rick Santorum will be all president. And I'll be like, what the hell? What did I say in early June? That he was a joke? What the? Okay. But he is, let's be clear on this, a joke. If you can make people forget that long enough to pull the lever for them, well, that's a whole different kettle of fish. And people have short, short memories when it comes to who they're going to vote for. Ugh. But while I don't think he's relevant, I bring him up to prove a point. Nine out of ten politicians, probably less than that, could give a crap about public service. They're headline-grabbing fame whores that are looking to weasel their way onto the A-list and profit off of that. Santorum's no different. So after the last election, when Santorum was politically dead in the water, what do you think would have been the best move for an upright man who cares so deeply about Americans and publicly serving them? Well, he's a lawyer. Maybe he could open up an advocacy group of some kind, a Christian advocacy group, or maybe he could just lick his wounds and continue to force to be a force in the GOP and regather himself 
for another run at presidency in a couple of years. No, no, no. What did he do after he lost the presidency last time out? He went straight into show business. He was attempting to make he was attempting to make Dallas, Texas, the uh, what did he call it? I think he called it the spiritual Hollywood. The religious, the the Christian Hollywood. That's what Dallas uh, was heading toward being uh, when Rick Santorum lost last time out, and he was all for it. And so he made <laughs> uh, after he stopped with politics last time out, he became the CEO of a movie studio. Yeah, Mister Sweater Vest, CEO of Echo Light Studios, Dallas-based studio that made. And I quote, uplifting films, which is code for Christian themed movies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's a Christian audience out there. Uh, <laughs> and he, uh, he he marked his first few months as CEO of this company by firing the two men who founded the studio and sued him for sabotage. Mm, sabotage. You're sabotaging my Christian show business. It's not a very auspicious beginning, but... And I bring this all up because, like, okay, okay, okay. Do we want a failed Christian movie producer as our president? Yeah. He he wanted to make Dallas the Hollywood of the faith and family movie market. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he put out this movie called The Christmas Candle, which um, had dismal reviews. N- nobody went to watch it. If uh, Santorum had any show business acumen, okay, I, I'm trying to be nice now. Um, he would have just gone straight to DVD before Christmas, but no, no, he had, uh, it, yeah, it just it was a giant bag of suck. Boring. Exactly. It's awesome because more than anything, I, I wanted to see this idiot fail. Not because he's a sanctimonious, homophobic piece of crap who doesn't respect the principle of keeping his church the hell out of my state, although that's a plus. No, no. The the real win in watching Santorum fail as a movie producer was that it was watching karma catch up with a slimy loser who fame whored himself into politics under the guise of public concern. Couldn't write a song, can't sing, can't act, can't write anything more interesting than legislation, yet still desperately want to be famous and rub shoulders with the elite? Get into politics. Make no mistake, Santorum's not a presidential candidate. He wants that Kardashian wet dream of being famous for doing nothing. No applicable skills or talent to entertain people. Politics. That's why I loved watching this two-faced lying piece of fame whoring crap fail in the entertainment industry. You suck, Santorum. Quit. You're wasting people's money.